This is not about music. This is about life, don't be mistaken. It's about the art of surprise, the art of disruption. If we want to make a reset, we have to think about surprises. It's not about obeying the rules, it's about provoking and breaking the rules. What counts is not what you do, it's not doing a job, it's actually putting your passion and your soul and your interpretations, just as I do in the music making. Winning numerous international awards, she has performed just about everywhere which is fabulous in the world. Her projects in innovation and creative marketing have won various prizes for their distinction and originality. Please welcome Orit Wolf back to the stage. I'm going to play you a piece you all know play you in three different versions and each one of you will decide which one he loves the most and then we'll do a vote together. Who liked number one? Good. A few of you. Number two. Very nice. Number three. Wow. <laughs> I also love number three, but I have to admit and tell you a little secret that if I would play number three in an international competition, I'll be out, I'll be kicked out right away because I played it with a pedal, played it very romantically, like I play Chopin, and it's out of style and people don't like it, judges don't like it usually. What counts is what I put into it. It's the performer who has the responsibility to make it special. We all talk about successes, but we never talk about failures. We all train not to make mistakes. We live in an era of perfection, the Facebook generation, everything is so perfect and beautiful and tuned. And you have to be very strong to, to fail and live and go on and continue. So, and I can tell you that even if you practice eight hours a day, you can still fail. It's not about security, it's about taking risks. You go on stage and anything can happen to you. The way we work is with disruptions all the time. That's how we trained. I play with different seats all the time. I'm not getting used to the same seat. Think about how metaphor it is for your own job. When I was studying here in London in the 90s, when the Royal Academy was closed, I would meet my best friend, Tamami Honma, the Japanese pianist. Then she would take me to this beautiful stores at Regent Street and Bond Street and New Bond Street. And she would go to those stores and try the best dresses, the best jewelry. And I would say to her, Tamami, why do you do this to me? We don't have the money for this. And she said to me one sentence that goes me along. She said to me, when you'll have the money, you'll know where to go and what to buy. <laughs> A few years later, Tamami became very rich and she knew exactly where to go and what to buy and also what to send her friend in Israel. <laughs> she knew how to approach life and what to dream and to fantasize for. And I think that's what really takes me with her, that she taught me, even if you cannot afford it, enjoy it change mistake into an opportunity and how it can be applied in real life in businesses. It's about the obsession to be what you really believe you should be. People who will leave a personal mark, who make a, an experience very memorable. The art of dream, the art of fantasy.